Hello, and welcome to another BMT unboxing video. Today we're going to take a look at the GameCube and see if we can fix the problem of it not being able to read a disc. Stay tuned and let's see if we can solve this problem. Today we have a, a GameCube. It is a black GameCube. Uh, this one has some problem with it. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix it, but we're going to take a look at it and see if we can get it working. What happens is it, essentially it's not reading a disc. It pops up the menus on screen, um, but it keeps saying no disc. Um, I put a couple of discs in that I do no work, and nothing happens. Um, <clears throat> I have seen that maybe the, the lens needs to be cleaned off, so I figure let me just open this whole thing up. Uh, clean it out and see if we can get it working. Um, to do so, you will need one of these star screwdrivers. Um, you can get them off Amazon or eBay for, um, I think this one costs five bucks. And it comes with uh, two bits, or this one came with two bits. Um, there's, they're both the star bits that Nintendo uses. Uh, the smaller one um, is used on the Super Nintendo games and the Nintendo games. And I believe in the N64 games. And the bigger one seems to be on the consoles. Um, the GameCube has four screws on the bottom. And you remove those and uh, the top just slides off. It's actually really easy to open up. Um, it does have card... It's dusty. It's not horrible, but it's dusty. So, we got the GameCube opened up. Um... I believe this lens needs to be cleaned off, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clean that, and while I have it open, I'm gonna try and clean the dust off of some stuff. Um, to do that and make it easier, I have some Q-tips and uh, some rubbing alcohol that I put in one of these uh, bottles that came with uh, screen protectors for my phone. It was the, their solution, whatever that was. But I emptied it out and put a rubbing alcohol in it, so it um, makes it a little easier to apply to the uh, Q-tip for me. Um, but I'm going to try and clean clean it out. I think I'm going to focus on the dirt over here and maybe over on this side and then go for the lens. At least if that doesn't work, the thing is going to be cleaned. Um, give a few sprays. There we go. Probably don't want too much. Um, this cooling fan over here, it's, it's dusty, but I've seen a lot worse before, so I guess that's a positive. <laughs> um, rubbing alcohol might not be the best way to absorb the dirt, the dust. This is a little loose, though. Hmm. I don't know, maybe over years, it just... Some stuff came loose. Um, it is possible that this has been opened before. And someone unscrewed some stuff. This is not a console I owned originally. I got it used. Um, and it doesn't work. At least gameplay doesn't work. It, it, does, it does turn on, show the main menu. Um... It was able to read memory cards, so that's cool, you know. My finger's gonna work more than the Q-tip. Um, let me see if I can tighten that down. That's probably shouldn't be loose like that. There we go. Um, anything else loose? Just a tad. Okay. I know this seems kind of trivial, but dust is not a computer's best friend. Hopefully, most of it sticks to the rubbing alcohol. Alright, let's see if we can get this lens cleaned up. Um, I don't even know if it's work. I mean, it's possible the whole assembly is not working. 
because when I would turn the system off, the um, disc wasn't spinning. Now it, it may be, it doesn't sense anything, it doesn't, the motor doesn't turn on, so that's highly possible. I'll, I'll do a cleaning, I'll pop a disc on it, and uh, we'll turn on and see if anything spins up. Um, before putting the cover back on. Doesn't look dirty at all. Alright, um... Let me, let me get a disc and uh, I will uh, see if this turns on. Or see if it spins. It does turn on. Zero, let me get the power. Let's plug up. Okay. So we got plugged up. Let's see if we can get rotation. All right, so to turn this on without the cover on, you need to push this switch down. It's how it senses the lid's closed. So you push this down and then you hit the power buttons. Oh, this. Okay, so it's, let's see, I might have messed up on this. It does help to turn your TV on if you're trying to see what happens. All right, so it's spinning up, it's loading up, and it stops. Hmm. Okay, so the motor does spin. So that, that does take care of the issue of does it work, does spin, so that's good. And the lens does appear to have moved. It's like a one trick pony, man, that's all I know what to do is clean that sensor that lens you got nothing out of this time <laughs> hmm I think the laser is turning on maybe it has gone bad <clears throat> All right, well, that seems to be all we can do to clean the lens up top. Uh, doing some Googling, as we all do, it appears there may be a way to um, actually adjust the power of the laser. Maybe up in the voltage a little bit, or may maybe I'll be able to read the disc a little better. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's not sensing a disc is there so it's just shutting down um so i'm gonna go through and try to uh turn the voltage up a little bit but if you turn up too much it can actually burn your disc that could be kind of cool but that's not for now all right <clears throat> so what we need to do after we since we've taken everything apart uh we're going to want to take the front and back panels off um there are these clips right here here and there's one here and the same on the back side. We're just going to gently push on them. You want to pull the clips out away from the unit and then just uh, kind of folding it down. You don't want to have any of these ribbon cables break, but it looks like it's fine just to let it hang there a little bit. And this one, well, this one just lifts out. Put it off to the side. Um, and then we need to remove the cooling fan. The piece that was well, just a little dusty, a little dusty. Um, this one, we just, the two screws here. And uh, that is it. We just need to remove the, the fan. So take your trusty screwdriver. Phillips screwdriver, by the way. Phillips. Okay. 
try and keep all your screws piled up someplace um, in some type of order. Organize them in some way. Otherwise, you may find yourself reassembling it and having leftover pieces and not know where they go. That's happened to me a lot. Um, okay. Let's see if we can finish it. Okay. And there we go. All right, perfect. While we're doing this, let me clean this up. This is nasty. So next we want to remove the optical sc drive screws, which appears to be these. Uh, there's 12 screws. All right, uh, so they're here. On this side, there's another five. And then the front, there are four. So here, this is the front side. Um, they may be different sizes. So let's, let's find out. They look to be about the same as the previous screws, but again, you want to, <clears throat> at the very least, keep the screws from this side, this side, and this side grouped together. You don't want to just mix them all in a pile. At least that way you'll not be able to say, hey, I got three screws, they gotta go someplace. All three of them came out. Whereas if you just had a big pile, you're not gonna remember and, and keep them, you know, you have two, then three, Four or five, the grouping can help sometimes. I remember where things go. It looks like they're all the same size. They're all the same size and the same threading. Um, but grouping is definitely going to make it easier to remember where everything goes. Ah, this one's tight. There we go. My screwdriver is a little on the small side for these, um, so that's why it's a little bit harder. Um, what is this? It's a, it's a PH1 Phillips. Um, probably a PH2 is what would probably be a little bit better, a little easier getting things out, but it's what I currently have in front of me, so. I use what I got. <clears throat> okay. So all 12 of those screws have been removed. Now we need to remove the memory card springs. Um, oh, no, that's the back side. So that must be up here. Um, I guess these? All right, so these four screws we need to remove. Oh, these springs. Hmm. Um, so we take out the four screws right here. I don't know. Let me see if I can rotate this a bit. So it's these two and these two. Um, and this is the springs that uh, the instructions are talking about. I'll put a link in the description for these instructions. They're off uh, ifixit.com. If this doesn't work at all, this will probably not end up on YouTube. So I guess I'm just talking to myself. Yay! Having a magnetized screwdriver does help in this. Now the, now the rules underneath my keyboard. These screws are definitely different than the uh, all the other screws. They uh, have a rounded top, so I can't exactly stand them up. As you can tell, my screwdriver is not the strongest. All right, so then we remove these. Remembering their orientation, they need to go back the way they came out. I don't think left and right matters. I think they're just they look the same. Um, so I don't think it really matters which one goes left or right. It's probably simple. Just remember this is the right one. This is the left one. Um, okay, now we need to remove the optical drive assembly. So it's actually just in a slot. It's not. There's not a ribbon cable, but it may require a little bit of love and attention. Okay. 
Optigo drive is out, so is all the dust. Uh, please stay tuned while I clean this. It's gonna be clean though. Alright. I may take that outside. Alright, but we need to turn our focus to this. Remove the screws off the bottom. Okay. Okay. Now we need a small. Okay, so you need a small screwdriver for these. Um, the PH1 Phillips seems to be. It works. Um, if you have anything bigger than the PH1, it may not work. So if you don't have a small Phillips screwdriver, you might get stuck at this point. So make sure you have small tools. Alright, so we'll remove what's probably a heat shield. Oof. I need to get a swiffer. Alright. So, I have no idea if you can see this. I might try and circle it. But I believe this right here, this little thing, uh, this piece right here, is a screw. And you turn it counterclockwise to increase the strength of the laser and clockwise to decrease it. We're going to try and increase it. See if that helps. Um, but first, I want to clean it off because I can't actually see what position it currently is. It did say flathead, but that clearly is a Phillips. I really don't know how much three degrees is going to be. Maybe it is a. Maybe it's a flathead, I don't know. Let me see if this fits. No, that's too big. This is definitely we're gonna to need to have a small bit. Um I'm going go with the small one. Triple zero. Let's see if we can get it. I have no idea what three degrees is, so let's just see. I have no idea that that turned it turned extremely easily there's no there's no give and since you can't see it, it ends up rotating all right Go back on what I said about being Phillips. It is a Phillips, but use a flathead because then you can actually monitor where it went or take a picture of it. I have no idea. I have no idea if I rotated enough or too much. All right, I think I rotated a um, acceptable amount. <clears throat> so let's put this back on. This will only go on one way. Uh, the connector is here, and these two um, pieces of plastic stick through. So it's kind of easy to figure out. Will this one work for these guys? Yes. Triple zero does work for these little screws. When you're tightening, just tighten them until they're flush. Don't um, don't crank it down as hard as you can. Something will break. I know the laser isn't always turning on because you can see it through the game disc. At least I can. I don't know if it's picked up on the camera, but you can see the laser through the game disc when it turns on. Um. Okay. 
I'm back. Took some compressed air and uh, cleaned this thing right up. Now let's reattach this to the main unit. Taking a nice firm push down. We reattach these springs. Zero may work on these two. Yeah, it does. So all the small screws seem to be triple zero. These bigger ones are probably going to be zero on your screwdriver sizing. I would recommend not cranking these screws down all the way on the first one. You want to get the second one started first. So that way, uh, it probably won't be an issue here. But some stuff, if you, you might end up binding it, and then the other screw won't fit right. Uh, it looks like there's plain clearance, so that wouldn't be an issue, but best practice, you know. Alright, we'll start with this side where we have our five screws. Oh. See if zero work on here. Zero may work. Let me get a or triple zero may work. Zero triple zero is working, but it's slipping. So let me go to one. If I said zero earlier, you want Triple zero on the small stuff, uh, a size one for the, the bigger screws, maybe even a size two. These do not seem to be made of iron, they seem to be brass, so they're not. Now I'm back, we had the set of four. Last side is to three, so we put these in. Also, if you have one of those kits where you have the really thin screwdriver handle, don't use them. The, the thicker the handle, the easier it is to do this. This one's not the greatest. Not horrible, but it's not the best. <clears throat> Oh, well, this, since it has five screw holes, it's a little hard. Um, but the end ones are actually for this. So these three actually go in the middle. Okay. Auto drive is fully back installed. Now let's uh, install the cooling fan. There we go. And then the last two screws. It's kind of neat how they have two, three, four, five. Okay, so then this piece. Folds up like that. Yes. This sits on top. Right, let's see if anything we did worked. Alright. Mm. Here goes F0. Turn the TV on. <clears throat> In the moment of truth, once the TV comes up, please. Uh, 
Power's up, so. Fuck that up. <laughs> it worked! Look at that. Got working. Alright, if you've got a um, GameCube that won't read a disc, uh, it looks like you just need to turn the voltage up a little bit on the laser and um, it's good to go. Cleaning everything also seems to be a uh, probably was helping it. Um, I, I hope someone found that helpful and uh, thank you for watching. Have a good night. Goodbye.